Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Dev King tutorial. And guys, this may be the most exciting tutorial we have ever had on the channel. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well what's it about? And you might have read the title, but basically we're going to be learning about the user input service. Now if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically like how you detect if a player press a key. So if, for example, let's say you wanted to make it so whenever I press spacebar, I jumped. Well, obviously it already does that because that's, that's a built into Roblox. But let's say, you know, you wanted me to like delete a part whenever I press E, right? It would, you know, delete the part. That's how you basically find out what the player is pressing and how to actually make it do stuff. So this is very, very cool and I'm so excited to show you guys. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. So anyways, guys, um, oh, sorry about that. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. But like always, be sure to watch the beginner series if you haven't already or else you might be confused. So yeah, link to that is in the description below. But anyways, guys, let's start. Okay, so first things first, the user input service. Okay, now what is the user input service? Basically, guys, by definition, the user input service, um, you, can, you can look at it, but basically what it is, it's, it's like how you detect what the player is pressing okay it's the input service so whatever inputs are being pressed you can get from that so yeah but the only way you can get the user input service is through a local script so make sure you create a local script so go ahead and make a local script over here in the right hand corner or on the right side and uh, I'm gonna put in the starter player and then starter player scripts and then we actually have to get the service. So I taught you guys about services, I'm pretty sure. And how you get the service is um, you just make a variable. So we'll name it user input service. And then we're gonna make it equal to game dot get service. Or no, get service. And then, um, sorry, user input service. Now let me zoom in a bit because hopefully it's easy to read. There you go. Oh crap. All right, there you go. All right, so next we wanted to go ahead and actually make it do something okay so now there's a bunch and a bunch of properties for user input service like there is a lot um i have the wiki um over here in my left monitor i'll go ahead and show you guys that real quick but basically guys in the user input service there is like i said a lot of stuff and like many many properties that i cannot go over on one video like look at all this stuff okay basically this is how you find out if a player tap the screen this is how you make it so like your game's compatible with mobile and stuff like that this is a very in-depth um, service and I cannot cover everything in one video obviously so if you want to actually read up on it which I suggest you should then make sure to go watch this um, or make sure to go in the link in the description and I will have the um, API reference link to you know here right here so yeah link in the description I mean, anyways but we're gonna be covering a few of them the most important ones which is if input began and also what the um, or also what the like, uh, key is pressed how to find out if key is pressed so yeah Anyways, so we're gonna go back here, and we'll do this now. Okay, all right, so um, we're gonna start off by finding out how to check if a key is pressed. And actually, before I do that, I forgot to, one, I forgot to mention one thing. Um, guys, if you if you ever seen, um, you can actually get your keys, like find out what key was pressed with a mouse. Like, you know, I remember I showed you how to use a mouse, like local mouse is equal to, or let me get, let me get the player real quick. Local player is equal to game dot players dot local player and then I did remember I did local mouse is equal to player get mouse you can actually do mouse dot key down and um, connect a function to it right now don't use this you guys are probably gonna see this one day in some code maybe in a free model you might open it and read this don't ever use this because it's actually deprecated and it doesn't get updated anymore so this is very outdated and i do not recommend you use this it still works like most of the time um, i'm not sure exactly when it wouldn't work but i know this is not good anymore and there's a way better do way to do it which is with the user input service now the user input service is a bit more complicated but still it's a lot more a lot better okay so don't use this if you don't have to all right that's all i'm gonna say okay now let's go ahead and start this okay so we're gonna go ahead and find out how to detect if a player press something on their keyboard that's it we're just gonna find out how to detect if they press something at all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do user input service um and then dot um sorry i can't think <laughs> input began and then connect function Boom. Okay. Now, basically, what this means is it's this is an event, right? And whenever input began, so if a player were okay, so let's say if someone's on their phone, right, and they were to tap the screen, or let's say someone's on the computer and they press the key on the keyboard, or anything like that, input began. Um, basically, like I said, what what it does, it detects if anything or any input starts. Okay. So with this, 
we could just, you know, obviously print out, you know, input again, but we want to find out if they pressed a certain key. So what we're going to do to find that out is we're going to do, um, actually there's, there's parameters in here, sorry, and the parameters you have in here is the input that happens. So if a player does something, which, they, you know, they obviously have to, they had to put some input in, the, the parameter right there is input, and that's how you find out what the input was, right? And there's also one more event called game processed event. Now, um, this event basically means if, if the game processed it, then this will be true. So this is a Boolean value, and this is, um, I think, I don't know, this is, I don't know what kind of value this is, but <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, okay. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and do if input, um, inputs dot key code is equal to equal to enum dot key code dots. Okay, as you can see here, it says all letters right here. Um, we'll do we'll do R or okay, that's every single thing right there. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, we're gonna do A. All right, so basically, then prints player is pressing player pressed down the A key. Okay, there we go. All right, guys. So basically, right now, what this um, little if statement does is it finds out if the player pressed the A key, which by using the input it got from the f event, it's going to print this out, right? Now, what is enum? You guys may be wondering. Enum, I don't really know how to explain it, to be honest. It's basically just like, I don't know. I, I don't even know what it stands for, to be honest with you guys, but I just know that you need to put it there. You can look that up if you want to, but yeah, that's that's what it is. So if you ever want to change it any other key too, you can just do enum or enum.kiko.com r or dot f10 as you can see there it said a bunch of keys i'm not sure you guys can read this right here but it says like left curly keypad plus all the keys basically on the keyboard it even says like euro and stuff which i don't have my keyboard but anyways that's what it does so that's pretty cool well but we'll keep that for a for now and we'll go ahead and test it out and see if it works so there's one thing i want to do want to show you too so let's go ahead and run this and press a and look guys look at that okay player press down a key and it keeps okay as you can see there it's uh printing a bunch of times but it doesn't print out you know but um there you go so yeah that's what it does so it's pretty cool actually and obviously i move when i press it because it's the a key but but um it does print out there too so basically now i can bind it to something whatever i wanted to do i can make it do now if you guys noticed hopefully you ran the script with me if you guys noticed you actually whenever that um, whenever like you press A, it only prints it out one time. It doesn't keep printing it. You have to, if you want it to print again, you have to press A again. Even if you have it held down, it won't keep printing it. Now you guys are probably wondering, well, what if you want it to detect if it's being held down? Like, what if you want to know, what if you know, you want to know if it, the A key is being held down? Now, there's a pretty easy way to do this. It's not with an event, but um, I want to show you guys that because that's actually one thing I had a problem with back in the day when I was learning the script. So I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so basically. In here, if in user input service, you have user input service dot input began, right? Now, what you also have is you have user input service dot input ended. So basically, if there's no input happening, then this function will run. Okay, now I don't think there's any um things in there. Oh, okay, wait. No, there is. Okay. Alright. So Okay, okay, okay. Alright, so now this is a bit confusing, but there's also another thing in here with input ended called input right so it's the same thing now it's the input that ended so I don't explain that okay but basically whatever input ended it's going to be in this little variable right here right so we're gonna go ahead and do that and this event this parameter is literally optional I don't really use it too much but maybe in, in more advanced stuff you might but um you don't have to add this here if you don't want to and sorry about my dog he just shook <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anyways so we're gonna go ahead and do if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot a then okay so basically what I'm doing here in this event is I'm figuring out if the input that ended was equal to a right that's what I'm figuring out so yeah now basically how we can check if it's being held down is what we can do is make a variable up here because if I put it in here it won't be out here at all right so I make it in here because this is out of the scope of there so yeah hope you guys remember that anyways so we're gonna make a variable called a key um a key pressed okay so equals false okay so right now basically if the a key is pressed then we're gonna make this variable true okay so true and then we're going to make this variable false because obviously the input ended here and the input began here so now we can print out what it's doing and in a loop so we can do while a key is true I don't know. Wait, while well, a key is equal to true, do um, we'll do 
we'll do a wait because I don't, I don't want it to crash an accident and we'll print a key is being held down so now basically as you can see here if I if I press a and you know I'm, I'm doing input then it's gonna, it's gonna make this true but if I let go of it it's gonna make this false so that is how this event runs as you can see here if this is true then this event will run so let's test it out real quick and make sure it works and actually I don't, I don't think it's gonna work Okay, no, it doesn't work. I'll know. I know just why, actually. All right, so it didn't work. Now, why didn't it work? You're probably wondering. Okay, so basically, the the script ran through this event, right? When, you know, whenever Roblox reads a script, right, the, or the computer reads a script, it just reads right through it, and the events it'll actually wait for because it's an event. But the while loop it already read and it passed it, right? So basically, what that means is it it skipped it, and the A key was down and it was true, but it already read that, so it didn't go back to it. Now what we need to do to fix that is actually put this inside of the input began thing right here. So what we can do is this right here. And there we go. And now basically whenever the input is happening right now or the you know the input began, as you can see here, while a key is pressed is equal to true, you can do this. So now it should work, I'm pretty sure. Um, here we go. And yeah, see I'm holding it down right now, and as you can see there, it is printing it out a bunch of times. Uh, I'm not sure if you can read, there's like a little number beside it, but um, it's printing it out 180, 200 times, 240, 250, yeah. Basically, you get the point there, hopefully, and uh, yeah, that's basically what it does. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. That's how you detect if something is being held down, which is pretty useful. I'm gonna, You guys might use that one day, which you actually probably will, but um, yeah. Alright, now guys, we're going to show you one more cool little example, and... Um, a practical use for input service, which I'm sure you can think of some practical use for it, but I'll just show you anyways because it's pretty cool. So yeah, um, here we go. Also, one more cool event I want to show you guys too is you can actually check if like if the keyboard was pressed at all, you can actually check that too. You can do like um, here, let me show you. You can do if wait, let me delete this real quick. You can do if um, user input type. Or no, so if input dot user input type basically like the type of input is equal to enum dot key user input type dot keyboard. So then print player pressed a key, and then we can concatenate it. Um, we can make the key. Um, what is it? Input dot key code. There you go. All right. Now, basically, what this would do is print out the key that pressed. But basically, this if if statement right here, it text it detects if a player you pressed a key on the keyboard at all, and if it did, that way you know um, it did. So let's see if that works. So oh okay, I did not con concatenate right that right. Okay, what am I doing? Anyways, you get the point though. That's what it does. I I, that, I got a concatenation error, but um yeah. Anyways, that's what it does. You can print out the key right here, actually. You know, that'll, that'll fix it real quick. Okay, um, there you go. See, it prints out the key right there, prints it out what it is, and yeah, that's pretty cool. So basically, if you wanted to find out, like, um, you know, like what the key was, I'm pressing all the keys on my keyboard. This is so cool. I didn't know how to have all these keys on here. That's actually really cool. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's pretty cool. So yeah. All right. So now, if you wanted to find out if player was AFK or something, you could you know do that. And I don't know. It's a lot more stuff to that. But yeah, like I said, guys, please be sure to read up on that. And um, yeah. But anyways, before the video ends, I want to show you one more practical use for it. Now I know this is a pretty long tutorial. I'm sorry, but it's really cool too. So uh, yeah. Anyways, um, we're gonna go ahead and do something cool, which is we're going to make we're gonna make a part in here. Okay. Make a part. And we're going to delete the part if we press delete on our keyboard. Okay, so if we press delete on our keyboard, the part's going to delete. So let's try it out real quick. So we're going to do if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code um, dot delete, then game dot workspace dot part, and then destroy. All right, pretty simple stuff. We can watch it delete, and here we go, guys. So let's load in. All right, guys, take it out of the part and deleted. That's so cool. I don't know why. I feel like that's so cool. It's like, oh, I don't know, man. But anyways, that's pretty much what it does. And um, 
yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, like always, be sure to leave a like. And like I said, guys, be sure to read up on it as well because there's a lot more in the user input service that I didn't explain in this video because it would be way too long and I cannot cover all of it. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like always, be sure to join my Discord server in the link below. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask there or in the comment section. And um, yeah. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Hope you enjoyed this one. And also, guys, just one more quick thing. I'm going to be doing a live, um, like a, some kind of live um, like development session, maybe where we can have like a game jam. I don't know, man, but I want to do some live streaming where I can answer your questions like live. I'm not sure how many viewers I'd get, to be honest, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of a time to do it. I'll let you guys know when, but um, yeah. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, and I've said that 10 times already. But um, also, one more, okay, one more quick thing. Okay, guys, look, listen, listen, listen. So you can make like so much cool stuff. You can make like a like a, you know, like you can you can make pretty much anything now. I mean, you have the key pressed, and you have the mouse, so you pretty much don't have to do anything. Also, guys, you can actually get the mouse with the user input service too, which you can look into that if you want to. But um, yeah. All right, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm dragging this on so long. It's just like so exciting for me, and I'm just I'm excited to tell you guys. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one for real this time. Okay. Good luck. Have fun, guys. Bye.